We will call the meeting to order. Dave jumps on. He jumps on. Yep. So 6.03, 6 o'clock by the bell. Um, on the agenda, it looks like we uh, will be taking off the abatement request um, this evening. So Mike Billadu abatement will be taken off so we can remove that. And then the executive session, we can take that out. So unless anybody has anything else to amend, just need a motion to approve as amended. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Hey, Betty. Hello? Okay, no problem. Thanks, Dave. Bye. His his Zoom is not up to date, so it's updating. So he said it might be a while. Okay. All right. So who made the motion? Sorry. I Lindley. Did. Lindley made it. I'm I made the motion, Gene second. Gene second it. Yep. Thanks. Sorry about that. Yeah. I figured it was Dave. Mm -hmm. All right. So first on the agenda is an appointment that we have with Aldrich and Elliot for the phase two water project. I'll let Therese. So Take Jason it. Booth is on Zoom, as is Jameson Haddad. If I said that wrong, I apologize. And um, so there to talk about the, obviously, our $2.5 million project that we just put out. I put in your packet the water system improvement total project cost summary, as, long, as well as um, their bid analysis report. Some other stuff I... I kept that I didn't put in your packet. That's a lot of information there that you didn't need, like some of the details. So, but uh, Jason is here. I'm not sure. Jason, have you ever met? I know Wayne has been here. Have you been here before? Yeah, I, I was okay. there for the last, for the last project. I'm not sure if I've okay. met anybody, if there's any new members, but um, yes, I'm familiar with some of them, some of the board members. Okay. Yeah. So I met, yeah, then it would be Chris and Lindley. So we do have a couple new members, uh, Denise and Jean and Dave Eddy is, um, will join us a bit, is having technical difficulties. He'll join us eventually, but Great. so anyway, so your mo your discussion was to, or, or not discussion, but to approve, uh, award the bid to Hebert construction. Correct. Yep. So there's, there's two documents, two separate documents. The first one is the bid analysis and recommendation for contract award to Hebert um, <clears throat> Excavation Corporation out of Williamstown for the contract price of $1,581,565. Um, and, and that's, we went through a complete bid analysis, as you mentioned, Therese, um, and you can read through the, the body, just talks a little bit about where the total project cost comes in with the, with the low bid, uh, with respect to the total bond amount. Um, <clears throat> We contacted bonding, banking, and references for Hebert, uh, and everything checked out. Um, we have also spoken with Roger Bergeron from the State of Vermont Water Investment Division. Uh, he's He has worked with Hebert. He's actually currently working with Hebert on a project in, in Montpelier, and he's worked with them on a couple others in the past. And uh, he, he, he was, um, his, his comments were concurrent with our findings from references um, for other projects that he's worked on. Uh, so our recommendation is to award to Hebert. Uh, the other document that we have is a DBE analysis, which is a disadvantaged business enterprise analysis. Uh, and that's a procurement requirement for utilizing the drinking water SRF program. Uh, and Hebert did comply with the procurement requirements for that process. Uh, so we are recommending that um, that process is complete. Um, so more than happy to, to, to answer any questions that anybody has. Uh, if you want to um, talk about numbers or Hebert or DBE analysis, feel free. Okay. So I was looking um, at the last time we did the project, the 2.8, and I was looking at one of the costs had been, there was a charge, and I think it went under admin, but it was for um, GMP that like, Seventeen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So I had asked you via email today what was in construction administration um, and what was in special services. So I did want to tell the board that special services also contain something that Richard um, and Richard's here. 
in the audience that we need to do for part of our DWSRF is to have an updated operator's manual. And I think that Correct. was something that was on our drinking water. It is. It is. need that we wait until yeah. we try to finalize all the projects. Before yeah, we want to do one. exactly. So that is, you know, part of the special services is the cost of, of a and &E, you know, updating our owners, our owner operation manual. So just so people knew what that was. And, and so, and could you just talk a little bit about um, what's in construction administration as well? Sure. So construction admin um, goes for, extends for the duration of the project uh, from pre-construction meeting, <clears throat> which uh, would occur here in the next couple of weeks, assuming that the board concurs with our recommendation to award to Hebert. Um, so construction, construction admin includes pre contract preparation, um, uh, uh, pre-construction meeting, uh, submittal review. So the contractor has to submit submittal, submit um, stop drawings to us uh, for review on the products that are going to they're intending to use for the project. We have to review those projects, and that's anything from pipe to aggregates to pavement to silt fence, anything that's going to be used on the projects. Um, they submit to us, we review and approve and return to them. Uh, so that's part of contract admin. Uh, any change order, uh, review, preparation, uh, documentation that comes about during the project, pay requisitions. Um, we work closely with the contractor to track quantities. Part of that is, is the representative services tracking quantities as they go in, in on site, but then we get that data in our office and we work with the contractor to prepare a contractor pay requisition um, <clears throat> for monthly payments. Um, weekly site visits. We typically try to do weekly site visits with the contractor. I think um, it is the guy who. I'm sorry. No, it was funny. That's fine. I just had to mute um, one of the. Somebody just joined and they were talking. Oh, okay. So keep going. Yep. You're fine. Um, monthly monthly meetings and those are those are a standing monthly meeting uh, with the contractor owner and state of Vermont the, and uh, and ourselves. Um, <clears throat> where we would review uh, schedule updates, um, uh, stop drawing status, uh, pay requisitions, change orders, and any concerns of any of the parties at the meeting, um, contractor coordination, um, substantial completion, uh, walkthrough and certification, and then final completion certification, uh, walkthrough and certification as well. So there's just okay. the gamut of services there for... Kind of does. All right. Thank you. So if you look at the fit analysis, then Hebert was the obviously closest to um, a and &E did a, obviously a cost, you know, construction summary and estimate. And um, so Hebert was a little bitter by a significant amount. And um, so as Jason has said, he's gone through you know, their bids and he's checked on the <clears throat> banking insurance and all that stuff. So because recommendation is, is the one we need to go with. Does anybody have any questions for Jason? I had one uh, in the uh, recommendations at the end of the letter. Uh, you have referred to a resident representative. Correct. Is that who is that? <laughs> That would be, that's a gentleman from our office who's on site on a daily basis. Okay. And that's, that his name is Bob Moulton. Uh, Therese, both Therese, Therese and, and Richard have met him. He's been on site a few times to review um, project and just get familiar with, with uh, you know, valve locations, those types of things. But that's a, that's a service. That's something that's required by the state for all their projects that they fund. They want a representative from the engineer on site. Uh, and, and Bob is somewhat of a, I'll call him a liaison and he works with Richard and he works closely with the contractor and he's watching the contractor, tracking quantities, answering questions, working with residents. He'll be in advance of the contractor to make sure that residents are aware of what's forthcoming, et cetera. So he, he's on site on a daily basis. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Mm, I have a question, if okay. I could. 
Um, so in the last project, you know, Tim took a very active role in participating in, in the project day-to-day -day basis. Is that something that Richard is going to be involved in also? Will there be somebody from the town, uh, you know, kind of keeping an eye on the progress, not keeping an eye, but just being informed and mapping like Tim did with all the uh, uh, different locations and everything as the, as the project progresses? Well, that's one thing that, that Bob Moulton will do is to keep track of all the tie-ins and all everything, all the new lines and stuff. That will be part of A&E's um, you know, process and job description that we're hiring them for. Uh, you know, Tim was, uh, rest in peace, unique in the fact that he kept track of everything and the downtown project was a big project. That is not my expectation for Richard to be, to do exactly what, you know, Tim did. Uh, Richard will be in the loop with Bob Moulton and we'll obviously see him on a weekly basis, if not more. And, um, but as far as Richard being in the street and on the project as much, that's not my expectation for Richard. Um, but he has already met with Bob twice, at least twice, and um, we'll be in the loop. And obviously, uh, both Richard and I will attend the meetings with uh, Jason, Jameson, and, and Bob and the contractor. So this is also a better project in the sense that it's not right on Main Street, and we obviously don't anticipate having the surprises is that the right word that we had last time so oh, no. um so yeah but certainly uh richard will be in the loop but um but definitely you know doesn't necessarily on the street every day all day well i was just thinking about mapping and tim took a lot of pictures and documentation and whatnot so to, to, so, 10 so years 10 years from now uh right. somebody else will know where things are and it'd be a lot more so, better documented than it was in the years sure. past so, so Bob, our representative on site as part of his duties, will be taking photographs on a on a very, very regular basis of what's in the ground with reference to where it is above grade, um, swing ties uh, for all the connections. Uh, and that at the end of the project comes in the form of a record drawing that we prepare and provide to both you and the state for their documentation as well. So great. Thank you. I think, that, I mean, initially I had some concerns in regards to the bid analysis, just kind of looking at the the difference between um, the low bid and second bid. I think yep. obviously it probably came as a shock to everybody. Yep. But, um, but when I was kind of digging farther into some of the bid tabs, uh, I guess, I mean, there's lots of things that, you know, that are, are minor, you know, what I would say are minor. Um, but some of the more major ones um, seem like in the the road work um, pieces, which was um, uh, category D, which deals with like the um, we'll call like paved trenches and driveway tie-ins and things like that, that sure. they were considerably lower than not just the estimate, but everybody else. And then, and then the, the bigger items that the lump sum, you know, uh, crystal drive, pump station and Geico well, and some of those, yep. they were considerably lower as well. Um, so I, I guess just, I mean, I'm fine with going with the lower price. I just, you know, some of those numbers were, you know, flagged but, quickly on my radar. Yeah. Agreed. And, and, you know, we, we, um, we don't necessarily have it documented here, but both Jameson and I have, have um, we've had those conversations with Hebert. Um, Hebert is, has indicated that they um, are comfortable with their bid. They don't have concerns about the numbers they've submitted and their, their, they, they don't have any reservations or concerns that they were low. They're, not, they're very confident in their, in their number. Um, so we have had those conversations. Um, they are the apparent low bidder. I will note that two things um, on, on looking at the numbers when they first came in, came in um, Kingsbury Construction, who was the high bidder, um, we see them bid on projects quite often, and they put high numbers in all the time. So that's a kind of an outlier, and I'm not overly surprised by that. Um, and and Casella, 
Uh, we had been, we were actually doing a job with Casella in Springfield, and we've been talking with them frequently about other jobs, including this one, but they picked up a job just before this. So I'm also not overly surprised about their relative competitiveness of their pro of their bid on this job. So um, all in all, I, I agree with you. We had some of the similar concerns, and we did express those concerns to Hebert and have those conversations, and he's comfortable with his bid and didn't have any issues. So um, I think we're at a point where we were comfortable with the recommending to proceed. And, and then I guess the only other question I had was looking through it and I do a lot of work with engineers and it seemed like typically what I would see on a state job would, you know, the design process is 8%, 8 to 10%. And then the field um, process is, you know, usually similar eight to 10%. Yep. So like 16 to 20% right now we're, you know, I know we didn't bid the work with you guys, but it, uh, from what I calculate when I take out the construction contingency and things like that is, you know, that we're like 24% to build through the engineer phases, um, which in my opinion seems a little high. Um, I guess some of it makes sense if we have like the operator's manual that's in there right. for special services, but does that operator operator's manual is that all forty five thousand nine hundred dollars of special services or no? So special services includes the record drawings. Um, we have to do a project completion certification for the drinking water uh, permit to close out your permit. Um, <clears throat> that includes American Iron and Steel uh, documentation. That includes certi certified payroll documentation for the contractor, and then like you said, the O and M manual. So on those numbers for the um, SRF program, um, what the way the FR SRF program structures engineering fees, and it's, it's a little bit different than you would see on a, on a, on a VTRANS project or a federal highway project where they have a state fee curve allowance. And that's a, it's basically a cap on what we as engineers working with the SRF program can build to a project. Um, so we have to prepare our engineering um, services agreements and our tasking uh, and provide that to the state. Uh, this case, it would be Cindy Parks and Roger Bergeron for their review. It has to fit within that state fee curve allowance. Um, and so everything prepared that you're referring to, Chris, fits within that, that fee curve allowance as, and has been reviewed and approved by the state. Um, the one caveat there, like you noted, is the O&M manual. Um, that's not something that would typically be included in this phase. However, it's something that um, is your, survey, your sanitary survey for the water system. It's a requirement that needs to be done. And during the design process, the design program had, it had requested that we do put that, incorporate that effort so that it can be done for your system. So that's not a typical fee that's incorporated in there. And it does, it does um, uh, um, bump that up a little bit. Okay. Also say that when you when we did our last project, you were allocated certain light items um, in the just like you did this time, but you didn't build them all out. So well, that's correct. So that's and that's a fair point. So the RPR, which is the on site representative, that's a not to exceed fee. So what that means is we only bill what's used. And that's where Teresa is referring to the last project. We didn't use all the RPR times, so we didn't we didn't have to bill that time to the town. It, it, so the way that the RPR and the CA is based on contract duration, um, RPR is is a not to exceed only because you know the contractor uh, or sorry the RPR may not necessarily have to be there for uh, you know we get towards the end of the project. We still have contract admin that goes beyond because we've got to close out the project, but the contractor's not on site, so the RPR doesn't need to be there. Um, so there, there are potential savings there. And and then I think my my final question was: so on phase one, after we went through the award phase, and there was a pre-construction, um, I believe. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, Paul. Yes. Paul was here. Is I I believe at that point that there was. Uh, presentation back to the board on what the um, schedule of the events would be? Is that something yeah, that so you plan on doing again for us? We, absolutely. We're, so once we schedule the pre-con and we'll get a schedule from Hebert uh, and, and we can we can share that with Therese and, and Richard, we can come back to the select board and talk it through with the select board. H however you want to go about that process, we can be available. 
Yeah, I mean, I, obviously, mm -hmm. Therese needs to be in the know, but yeah, and Richard. But we, you know, as the select board, I know, you know, I yep. fielded a lot of questions last time on yep. what, why aren't they doing this or why are they doing sure. that, and yep. you know, we're able yep. to say, well, they're working on the water tower because it's later in the season or, or you yep. know, whatever. Yeah, or, yep. or they're done on this section for the year, but they're going to be back for a while next year. So yeah, sure. this we can head off some of those questions. Okay, absolutely. So my, yep. my other question was for you, Jameson. You had sent me the letters. Um, with the date on them of May 15th. So um, do you want me to change those to the current date before I give them back to you? Uh, yes, that would be good. Those were basically just a template um, yeah. that you could add your signature and and okay. modify the date to whatever is. The okay, I just, wanted, I just wanted to make sure you didn't need them that date for a specific reason. So I didn't want to change something and then make extra work for you. Nope. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion from the board? Dave, did you have anything? Oops, hang on, hang on. You're talking, I can't hear you. Hang on. <laughs> Let me see if I can unmute him. Mm -hmm. I can, yeah, I just sent him a message. There you go. I think you're good. Nope. No sound. You can send me a message in the chat, Dave, if you have any questions. Or you can call my phone, <laughs> whatever's easier. You might have clicked on without hitting the um, yeah, I don't, without hitting audio the, button via your computer. Yeah. Yes. Then you're Let's see. He looks like he might trouble. be typing. Did you have a question, Paul? Or are you just waving? <laughs> no, yeah, I'm waving too. Are there anticipated uh, schedule dates for complete, uh, you know, starting the process or anything yet, or is it too early in the? Not process? yet. Uh, not yet. No, we're we're waiting um, for Hebert's schedule and obviously this meeting to award. So. Yep. I don't know if Dave's. He looks like he's typing. Let me see if he's picking. Let me see if he's. <laughs> he hasn't sent me a text message, so. Yeah. We'll give him a second. Mm -hmm. oh, maybe here's one. Okay, I think he might have sent a message. My computer will not let me join with audio. Okay. okay, gotcha. All right. So unless we have anything at the board, um, we will just... You don't need a motion from us, right, do you? Yes, we need a motion to award to Hebert. Um, whatever, or, or whatever the matter. amount of it is. What? Yeah, for um, hang on a section. Sorry, I gotta find their full name. Hebert Construction Corporation. So, Jason, um, the bid plus the contingency, or is uh, was Hebert the straight one point five so we, eight one so we, five six five? So the yeah, so you would award the motion would be to award um, to Hebert Excavating. In the amount point of one point five eight one five six five. Okay, and it says it's Hebert Construction Corporation. Does that sound right? That's what it uh, says on your summary. On the bid analysis, I think it's Hebert Excavation. excavation oh, okay, all right. It's yeah, it's something different on the project. Okay, I just want to get it right for the minute. So, all right, so yep. you'll award just like it says in the letter, Hebert Excavation Corporation for the contract amount of. 1.581565. Yep, correct. Wendley and Jean. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Great. Jameson. We appreciate Thank it. You. And I'll get those letters signed tomorrow and scanned to you, Jameson. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Take Thanks. Care. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You too. Okay. And we'll move forward to public comment. So if there's anything that's not on the agenda that anybody would like to discuss, now's the time. We'll go in person first, Ellie. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, on Wednesday, May 10th, I got a phone call from the Vice President of the Vermont Community Development Association. She asked me to come to the Vermont Community Development Association Spring Conference in West, West, West Windsor on Thursday, May 18th 
to be a panelist to talk about recreation for economic, econ, economic vitality. So I have to say that I was very honored. I went and represented Bethel and was on the panel. And I spoke about all the wonderful improvements and, and family related events that we've been doing and happening at the Recreation Center. Those being the new pool house, the trails from the rec center to the school, the ice skating rink, the new, new location of the playground, and the skateboard park, along with the family activities and workshops that are held there. Nice. And I, I felt very honored. The other panelists were from the Upper Valley Trails and a man from Lindaville that had worked on an indoor ice rink and the director of planning and development in St. Albans that got them a swimming pool. So, oh, thank so that's um, great. So it was very nice to, uh, and honored to be representing Bethel and let people know all the wonderful things um, with your all help that we're doing. And, thank and, you for doing that. That's so nice. And what kind of feedback did you get from from your presentation there from others of um I I got wonderful um feedback because I I got to uh, personally meet Jackie Dagger that did the um Borac. Yeah. Um I got to personally meet Beth um Washburn from the Land Water Conservation. She's the one I got to meet all these other people in the state that are working on community development and stuff and they all came uh, up to me at lunch and just told me all kinds of uh, um, uh, wonderful things. And, and then also, were there any I, like anything that came up in the discussion that maybe triggered some ideas that maybe we could borrow from other communities that maybe they're doing that might fit nice with our recreational plan that we have now? Um, uh, the trails things from the one of the panelists from the um, Upper Valley Trail Alliance. Um, and I think that 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 having that tie-in and, and connection with him, we could um, do with him. I don't know how to do um, the pool that St. Albans did. They spent $5 million for it. We don't have that? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, were you donating that? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, what's, the, what's happening with the old pool? Yeah, <laughs> can we afford that? Yeah, <laughs> nice. So, so I didn't, I didn't get any yeah. takeaway from that. Um, oh. and um, and and then there was another panel of people from a Scutney that that um talked about how they um saved the bankrupt a Scotney ski area oh. and how it went bankrupt in 2010 and how they worked to put that all community back together. So nice. But I think definitely um, having the input from the uh, the trail because we are we're still working on yeah uh, having that that feedback from that guy is very helpful. So. Nice. Well thanks for attending that. For us, you're a big celebrity now. <laughs> They're gonna steal you now. Yeah. All right, hands off. All right. Anything else uh, in person, and then I'll go online. Uh, see anything else in person? So Owen had his up first. Hey y'all, good evening. Um, Owen here representing the Equity Inclusion Committee. I just wanted to remind everybody of our first inaugural book group, group oh my goodness, book group meeting um, next week on Tuesday. It's gonna be from 5.30 to 7.30. It will be at the town hall because we, we ran out of all 30 copies of our books and I just ordered 10 more copies that I picked up this afternoon. So we have a lot of people coming and I hope to see some of you there. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Owen. Can you talk a little bit about what the format of that group meeting is gonna be like? Yes. Um, so we are going to have dinner. Um, so I think for the first half hour, we'll just be eating, mingling, and then we'll do, um, 
we're going to do it in kind of like a, a circle format, not a circle process, but just let people go around, introduce themselves. And then there's a series of kind of just prepared questions like, what is something that you learned from reading this? What are questions that you still have? And then also um, an opportunity for people to ask the group questions. Um, and that's pretty much it. Just hope to like spark conversation and for people to get to know one another through this um, through this medium. And since it's our first one, we'll also really be asking for feedback from participants. Like, is this the right format? Do you, we want more structure? If it's feeling like a really big group, like if we get 35 people, <laughs> um, we might split into two smaller groups just so that it's easier to have a conversation. But that's the format. Awesome, thanks. Okay. All right, anybody else online? You can either raise your hand or unmute now if you want. Except for Dave, because he can't unmute himself. <laughs> He's not pleasant. Mm -hmm. All right, we will move on. <clears throat> So first agenda item is the water and sewer budget annual discussion and adoption. So I'm not sure if, so Richard Manning is our chief water sewer operator. I'm not sure if he's met everybody. So Denise, I'm not sure if you've ever met Richard. Okay. Lindley, you know, Chris, you know, and this is Gene Krause. I'm not sure if you know Gene. So I just want to make sure you knew everybody. So obviously, um, Richard took over uh, the department after Tim's passing, and he has done a tremendously wonderful job. And we met to talk about the, the budgets. So obviously, we put a draft budget in the town report, and then we've done some tweaking since. Um, I had already told you that when Richard and I met in, hmm, I don't know when we met with the Lisa, was it Lisa from the state? For the uh, sewer, Michelle. Michelle, I always want to call Lisa. Michelle, I told you when I came back that there was some EPA things that the state was being saying to us. Well, you know, the EPA basically told them that if they didn't start enforcing them, the EPA was going to issue licenses. So, yeah. So, <laughs> and we, so which nobody wants, and we ended up having some expenses there. I think I talked to you guys a little bit about that. That there'd be some additional testing and some. Um, uh, yeah, or equipment and things like that. So obviously that's reflective in the sewer budget. Um, the other thing that we talk about is normally we try to set rates at this time, but we did not have, we sent out an annual water sewer survey to the businesses and to try to figure out, you know, to make sure we have the same amount of EUs, main apartments, our businesses, you know, the same amount of employees, things like that. Like the school fluctuates um, sometimes, uh, Nolato fluctuates. So it depends on some of the businesses because the EUs are based on employees, um, units, usage, et cetera. Um, so that, so I don't have the rates. I was working on it before I came and I'm like this close, but I don't have the actual rates, but we do have the budgets. So per the ordinance, you need to approve the budget and we'll approve the rates um, based on this budget if you approve the budget um, in two weeks when we meet again. So I do think that despite the water budget being um, level funded, that the rate still may increase a little bit because we've lost a couple of EUs. So I do think that we're gonna see, see that um, a little bit of an increase there. So on the proposed water budget piece, yep. the, the only two things that kind of stuck out to me, maybe some clarity. Um, so the first piece was, under building maintenance, there's the boulevard transfer switch generator. So Richard can talk to you about that. Yeah, I think the, state, the state would like us to do is have backup emergency power. If we endure a long-term outage, we can still pump water and keep the storage tanks full and keep residents with, with water. And that's something we don't have currently. I know that if the state's requirement, we may have to do it sooner than later, but I'm just wondering if that would fall into the grant that Green Mountain Power is applying for on behalf of that if Well, I think this is more than that, Richard. This was yeah. building maintenance was 41,000. So I think that was for the generator and the transfer switch that cost. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So yeah, so I don't think it will be anything that they'd be able to 
help us with with just um, knowing that they were kind of looking at right. creating those micro grids for resiliency if it could be something right so they don't have that grant so yeah it's not a done deal and we may have to sort of adhere to the states yeah sooner than later but we can certainly you know talk to her about it and and see so and, and i guess so kind of going with that was not saying that we don't need to do it or not do it I'm just was curious and then you know would that be an item you know, uh, if we wanted to lessen the blow of things, is that an item that could potentially be purchased out of the out of our um, fund capital improvement. capital improvement fund? Possibly, or we have some monies that are left over from the right. You know, from the ARPA six hundred thousand right, which you put into the roads. Well, I know, but, so um, but it's but yeah, general funds, so, right? And we did already you know, pay for just some. Just trying stuff to think, like, work. because you're yeah. saying that even though it's level funded, it yeah. might go up because it there's some EU differences. Yeah. So, but it, is there an I mean, opportunity to lessen goes, the blow a little bit for one right. year? And if it goes up, it's not going to be obviously much because it's a no increase. Um, I can look into, I can look and see what is in the um, because in the past we budgeted money, but when you so we put fifteen in the reserve fund, right? And but when um, we don't. If the but if the budget doesn't is overspent, then you don't always transfer that over. Mm -hmm. So I'll need to take a look and see how much is in there. But there may be some either there or in your um um uh, Lord, that's the word I want. Undesignated fund balance. Yeah. So that, Sorry. the first part was, you know, is it something that the water reserve fund could absorb? If yeah. not, the second part of me was thinking, you know, the ARPA money that we just moved around, it's Again, it's still in the general fund, so we can. Right. Well, no, it's not. I already moved it into the capital yeah. funds, but we can do it again. And I remember that one of the definitions of the capital fund is water and sewer. So. Right. So I mean, just thinking. Uh, and we may be able to. I look. I didn't look um, at how much money is in the capital that would, fund. That would be something ultimately, if we decided that would be select board approval to. Yep. Designate funds. For yes. That. Absolutely. Right. And then, and then the um, just uh, just want some knowledge on the, the debt principal. So it went from 68, we budgeted last year down to 28. So did we have a, a loan that had? We, uh, yes, ended? we had a loan that paid off. Yep. Okay. Yep, we did. We did. And plus two, the DWSRF loan from the first project we put in separately. So yes, but we did. We paid off a water bond. Okay. All right. That's my question. Did you have much luck with the delinquent 24-hour notice people? We had amazing <laughs> luck with that. We started with 20. Yeah, and we didn't shut off anybody. And I, the final holdout, I got a signed payment. I got an agreement via email, so we'll have a signed payment arrangement tomorrow. So, yes, we have actually had someone come and make their payment today. And so, yeah, it worked, and we'll do it again in... 60, 70 days, whatever. So people will, that way, if they've made a payment arrangement, have not heard, have not adhered to it, then they're back up again. So, um, but no, it really worked. And Richard started, you know, we we're trying to look for some shutoffs. We weren't quite sure where they were and things like that. But yeah. So, but never fear if you're on the shutoff list, we'll dig it up and put in a new shutoff. So it's, you know, <laughs> we will find a way. <laughs> so don't let that deter you from paying their bill. But um, did anybody else have any questions on the, I will say I wanted to mention here, just the overtime. Um, you have to remember Tim was on salary. So we kind of were, I was shooting a little blind last year. Plus I did increase overtime because of the phase two water project for extra time that Richard, you know, may need to be on site or if there's a, a break that he needs to help with shutoffs, hanging shutoff notices, et cetera, that still falls to us. So just so you know, we did um, throw a little money in there just to I didn't want any big surprises. So then anyone else have any questions on the water budget? It just come here. In the same way that the, we asked for the bond or the the finance of the water project mm -hmm. out of the consumer's money, mm -hmm. as a person who does not have town water, yeah, I would, and I'm not opposed to mm -hmm. <laughs> having town water. I just think that that becomes an obligation of people who are using the service. 
not ARPA money or oh okay in my opinion in your opinion okay duly noted does anyone have any questions on the sewer budget this one obviously is up 2.86% over last year. We have um, in here obviously added some overtime. As I just said, Tim was on salary, so we had to make a new line item. Um, we had an estimate to get a door or a double door at the plant repairs. So we have an estimate on the door of, of you know, 4,100 and then another, and then there's installation. Um, so we also, um, Richard is getting some pricing. I had to note in here on uh, clarifiers, a composite sampler, which is we had in here for a price of like 6,500. We had um, a Wyatt, we have a drive shaft we need welded. That's about $5,000, some clarification um, or calibration, excuse me, of equipment. Um, so as you can see, this is definitely reflecting some of the changes. Our, our testing is up. Uh, we need $1,750 per year for wet testing, plus increased E. coli testing. But what is wet, the wet test? That's the whole effluent toxicity test. I think Tim only had to do it like once every three to five years before, but now we have to do it annually. Yeah. Uh, this year, it'll be late summer, early fall. Next year, it'll fall into... January, February type thing, and it keeps a rotation. And the E. coli testing is different now. Yeah, we normally do that twice a month now in the summer months from May to September. We've got to do it weekly. So, and we're also, obviously the plant is 35 years old, so there's some maintenance to be done. Um, Richard is, you know, a lot of our equipment is older and, and he's done a good job finding someone who maybe can fabricate some gear for us and we're trying to get some work done with you know either Wyatt or some other welder and so there's just some he's gone about and, and talked to you know people manufacturers of equipment because some of this equipment is at it's the end of its useful life and that is exactly the way it's written um at some point in Bethel they had done a wastewater you know long range plan and so the useful lives you know are right up there yeah. so Richard is working on you know doing that so just for clarification, the the sort of increased testing cycle is that the, is that sort of universal EPA mandates, or is that because of our aging system? Like, is that unique to? Oh, I just I think the EPA coming down on the state requiring more frequent testing, so they have more data. So that's, that's it's basically a result of this. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. everybody across the state was getting that. Yeah, well, and um, some of the stuff that you know it's it's not cheap. So we had. I think I had told you there was a grant. They had mentioned some um, equipment and then there was a grant. But by the time we had our meeting and we were told that we could apply for a grant, the grant period had ended. And they were like, why did you apply? I'm like, because we didn't know we would need one. You know, we try not to. Why would we take equipment from somebody that we didn't, you know, uh, we didn't know we needed at the time. So purchase one of the composite samplers because I do have a lead on a freebie one that we can use yep. long term. Yep. So yeah, so, and I think I had the same round. the The first part was that eighteen thousand dollars worth of pieces that we need to mm -hmm. fix or get. Yep. Is is that something again that we can either take out of the reserve fund that we have, or something that we could one time purchase with the monies that we had? Well, we may be able to take that out of the reserve fund, but one of the thoughts there is is um, that because the system is aging that you know you may want to that money may be better served since you're only at a 2.68 percent whereas if you had one of the bigger things that at the end of its life fail it's going to be a bigger cost yes we could apply for um you know instead of srf funding for there is or dwsrf there is srf funding so it, it depends but we could certainly look at that option The sludge that's left over after everything, I'm assuming, where does that go? We haul that to Montpelier Wastewater Facility. They further process it up there. And so Bethel used to be on the land apply up until eight, seven, eight years ago, I think. And when the state took back over the field where that was done. So since then, it's been hauled to Montpelier. And so I'm just curious if that's um 
if the methane is being farmed from that? I'm not sure about how Montpelier's process or about doing it. I don't know. If if they, if there's a a methane production place someplace in the state, I'm wondering if they would buy it rather than not having to pay for it, having it hauled away. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a that's one of the climate things. That's yeah, I'm not sure what there is for wastewater. I know there's a farm up in like Enosburg or something. I think they have a methane digester for their manure that they use to power the farm. Right. I don't know if there's anything else available like that in the state. Okay. I, the other question I had in regards to that was um, on the, well, it's a good thing Gene said it, on the sludge disposal, we we budget $25,000 a year, at least mm -hmm. the last four years. Can't say yep. beyond that. It seems like we're always about half of what we budget. Yeah, because typically so, yep. Tim and I have been on schedule when we're able to do so it. So I guess my question would be, we budget 25 and we're only going to use 12 or 14. Could we... Could we budget? Could we budget fifteen there, and then use ten of it towards buying down the maintenance equipment, which would buy down your rate some? You know. Well, I can tell you that Tim's theory, because I remember whatever the last budget we did together, that had been my suggestion was, can we cut this down? He's like, listen, he works really hard, and so does Richard to keep the affluent a certain way, but if it's all a matter of when it turns over, if all of a sudden you get any other bacteria. There. Like, yeah. Like like this summer, I'm working with Wyatt's Welding to get him scheduled to come and do some work for the clarifiers. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to pump the sludge that's out of there into the digester. And I'm going to need a little bit of a buffer. So a little extra like money for that. Have, to have, have it hauled out a little more frequently this year because of that. Yeah, and and... And because if they're like, I can't remember what it was called, like Philomenus. I don't know. I just would call it Phil. Yeah. Tim, <laughs> Phil, Tim had an issue one year and he hadn't seen that in the plant for a while. So much so that he had to buy a product that he hadn't bought in years. And all of a sudden it was just, and he was really working hard to get the sludge, you know, back into a, into where our parameters need to be. So sometimes there's bacteria organisms that are dumped into the system There's some unknowns that we don't know yeah and um that can cause it to go so for tim it was the same thing he was always like listen you know if i don't use the money then sometimes he would buy equipment or do other repairs kind of what chris is saying but he did you know like having that buffer in there because he's like look i am work really hard to keep this number but well, again, I think that was kind of the yeah, one I was looking at. Exactly, not, yeah. Was like, it's kind of like the salt versus the gravel, right? Like, right, exactly. Like if you come out of winter using a lot of salt, then we don't put as much gravel down, right? Yeah, exactly. So I didn't know if in this case, you know, if things are going well and you're not going to spend your, right. your sludge budget, does that give you the opportunity to do those, you know, pick up two or three of those things inside that? Yeah, and it and it may. And then what would happen is just, yeah, right at the end of the year, we would... Um, you know, sometimes as we go further into the year, we, the fiscal year, the budget year, you can kind of tell what's going to be left on the table for money and and go that way. So the reserve fund, does that accumulate year after year? Well, for a long time, it didn't. Um, so what happened is because the general fund was keeping sewer and water afloat. So for a long time, there was no money being put into the reserve fund because the rate your rates weren't high enough to um actually cover your the use and, and we have we have bridged that gap now mm -hmm. so that the rates actually work but um and i have to look and see either what's in your undesignated fund balance i didn't bring a copy of the audit so i apologize and um see what's in for transfer because when you owe the general fund money you don't have any money to put in a reserve fund because we were off well, and i'm asking because if the equipment is all nearing the end of it you exactly life, are we putting enough aside? It's I mean, hard to it, say. It, 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 it's hard to know, mm -hmm. but. Uh, yeah, it's hard to know. And we also, it, 
with water, we've been lucky that we've been able to take care of some of the bigger repairs as part of the bonds. And sewer, we may end up looking at, you know, depending on uh, over the next year or two, there may be some equipment that we need to deal with. We we're lucky. We just got all the pumps done in that massive generator, um, you know, to the tune of 30 some odd thousand that we got through ARPA money. And we got all the new pumps, which we desperately needed. So, um, but, you know, it's but, hard to know. So, uh, sewer is increasing. Yes. At this point, the budget's increasing 2.68%. Okay. So, is it safe to say on here where it shows, make it up? Mm -hmm. You know, $5,000 was budgeted for the reserve fund, but zero was put in there that we have not been putting anything in those reserve funds? I didn't at this and I can't, I'd or have to look. Is that just not on your spreadsheet? It may just not be on my spreadsheet. I have to go back and Because if that is a trend, that's kind of alarming because there's yeah. pretty much all four years that we budgeted, nothing has gone in unless yeah. that's just a spreadsheet issue. And usually it's what on happens water is and sewer. if I match the audit, then a lot of times there's certain, like you'll see depreciation, but you don't see the expense. So sometimes I'm matching my well, numbers yeah. to the audit. So is, is, I guess one thing I'd like to know so, yes, we're making for next time is, is that in its own little fund? Yes. Or is. is it sitting in an undesignated fund that needs to be moved? Right. So some of it is um, like sewer and water have their own, they do have their own funds that we do transfer into. Um, but there may be money in the undesignated fund balance. I just can't remember off the top of my head right now what they say. Um, but I know uh, as of you know, four years ago, we owed the general fund quite a bit of money. And hence, when we started budgeting due to the general fund, basically what we were doing was saying, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to collect enough rates to try to keep, get the general fund or the sewer water out of the hole. So I guess I need to move the tables again, Denise. Sorry about that. Yeah, see, <laughs> we'll shift you this way. Um, Come on down. <laughs> that's right. So if you want to make it easier, um, you know, we could table this discussion for two weeks. So I can go back and double check on a couple of numbers and then I'll have the EU. So at least we've had the discussion in May. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Whereas if we wait and table it for two weeks, we'll be able to set the rates since by then I will have met with uh, Kevin Barry to see what his change is and hopefully have confirmation on one of the numbers from the lotto. So because every EU makes a difference. So, so I, yeah, if you could, uh, yeah, absolutely. Reserve one, fund. Yep, I let's got it. know what the reserve funds absolutely. balances look like, mm -hmm. um, or is there something sitting fund in the designate undesignated fund that we have to move? And then two on those two items that we had talked about, some purchase stuff. Is there opportunities? Are there other options other than just put it in the budget? Yeah, sure. Reserve that may, that might make sense. Yeah, so exactly. So I'm going to absorb in the capital is there fund. Anything else that we had? Well, just just on that last point, I think this Gene made a really apt comment that you know we do try to keep the funds that we use to the users of of this system i think right. the the one variance that i would see kind of to what chris's idea was of maybe pulling in some arpa funds is if if we could find out from green mountain power if something like a generator I can or some her. sort of microgrid system could be part of their grant I could see an argument for using ARPA funds to purchase a generator that ultimately would be sort of available to the town's use for an emergency situation or for whatever comes up that then that's that sort of shared equipment as opposed to user specific. Right? Is that a portable, going to be a portable generator? Okay. All right. So I can ask GMP, um, ask, what was her name? Tasha? Yeah, that was big. Yeah. Tasha, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I just I think your point is valid, but I could also see sort of a, a, a nice little middle ground in there. Yeah, where, <laughs> you know, I don't want it, to be against it. Could, it. Yeah, just, it could be beneficial for everyone. Yeah, so I can ask her um, if what she, you know, if they get the 19 million, you know, that's a if. I'm not sure we'll know in two weeks, but it's something we could ask about. Well, she said it was like guaranteed. Was well, happening. they were really hoping for well, it. That they said it was pretty much slam dunk. Right? They, like the Celtics moving on in the playoffs. <laughs> it was like slam dunk. It was happening. But, but they, they also said, if I understand correctly, that they were looking at school as a must-have power all the time. Mm -hmm. And that they were building some, they were providing some sort of a redundancy for the school. Yep. And well, so, so whether it. or not that there's a potential tie-in again with that school as well. Yeah, yeah, they do. They have a generator that we purchased there. I don't know, 
less than 10 years ago. Yeah. It was after Irene that we purchased that. Maybe right. two years after Irene. That's right. 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 So, yeah, right. right out back. And then Dave, um, Eddie made a comment in the chat that said, I think that what is needed in a methane digester is not in just sludge, he said, but he may be wrong, but he's he's thinking that may need more. You all know more about it. Yeah, so I don't I know. know. So sewage is one of the things that produces methane. That's right. That some folk are harvesting. All right. So if we can so just at this point, we're good with just tabling the yeah. yep. water and sewer budget yeah. discussion for next that makes sense. Meeting. And I'll look and see what's in the reserve funds and figure out what's what. And then um also email Tasha and CCU at GMP to see what is part of that 19 mil. And then I'll just send you an email. Okay. So, anyways, All right. but now you get to be seen and meet everybody. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I appreciate that, Richard. Thanks. And uh, so I'll get the letter signed for A and E. So I'm sure you'll be hearing from Bob. And once we hear the schedule, we'll have our start setting up our monthly meeting date. So. All right. All righty. And we have. You can sneak out. You don't have to stay any longer if you don't want to. <laughs> You've had a long day. <laughs> That's right. You can stay. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, we tabled it. Yeah. <laughs> got to be good for a whole nother two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's got to be good. Mm. Uh, rec committee request for coin drop for August 12th, 8 to noon. Any discussion or a motion to approve that? I like to that. It's nice to have. Who's what I got? Everything needs to be in order. I move it. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. I thought the Historical Society did a good job with theirs. It was well placed and yeah. toned and worn. Yeah. Yeah, I happened to come through Bethel that day. I forgot yeah. they were doing it. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, they did a good job of laying it out. And yeah, that yeah, they good. did. All right. So that is good. And then as we um, had started our discussion last time into um, goals for what? town manager and or select board. Oh, here's Dave. He's just um me. So what we had talked about doing for this year for the town manager, rather than uh, maybe have a specific goal that we want her to do, that maybe we would have, we talk about some areas that uh, I'll make it up. So we decided like uh, maybe community relations, and then that would allow her the opportunity to pick a goal that fits community, you know, a smart goal that would be, that would cover that. Um, so I guess what we would talk about is kind of kind of a parameter of maybe two to three um, topics that we can fit there. And then and then Teresa would go back and find two or three goals that would that she feels would fit that. That would be a smart goal. So so I talked to Lindley and so I did look and last year we did do the review and it was signed in June of uh, 22. So um, that you and I did, Chris, after the select board met and Lindley had a recollection that we had this discussion like last year and about going to the annual evaluation process, which is what we did last year. So I was like, I could, and I did pull it out and look at our signatures to see when we signed it. My, my recollection on it was that it was really what Teresa's argument was. I think you even said this last meeting was um, to align it with all of the employee, like to just kind of make it one fell swoop of she's doing all the employee ones and we're doing hers sort of in a simultaneous motion and, mm -hmm. and it fits with the with the change in budget year and mm -hmm. all of that. And so I think, and I think it sounds like from your paperwork that we actually did that last year. And so then we're just sticking with our new plan. And, yeah, and we did the and the goals that we did last time were basically my were smart goals that I chose. But I I am fine. I like the idea and I'm totally open to the idea of if you having setting some things you might like to see and then me picking my smart goals from within that. It's always nice to have some information. That's fine. I'm all good with that too. I was like, gonna see if David messaged me back. So um so yeah, so I'm just curious what you, you know, Denise asked me, she's like, What do you what about your goals? I'm like, I we talked about it a week ago. I'm like, I got nothing. I was kind of uh, just too many things going on at the time, but 
So I'm not, I'll be interested to see what you guys came up with. Nothing. Um, well, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll start it off. He's got 20. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I was just kind of thinking out of the, you know, like mm. I do this every year at my work. So, yeah. and, and that's kind of how they do it is they, yeah. they put it out there. Um, you know, obviously all, all the goals align from top down. Right. Um, oh, so, that's a great idea. I so like that. some things I've um, kind of just looked at was like one, one would be like an employee development piece. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you could choose a goal that, uh, or somebody to work on to develop their skills. That, oh, Richard. It could be, well, it could be, <laughs> just it could be somebody, you know, it He's could so be easy. somebody new coming on. Right. It could no, be somebody that right. maybe needs some help on developing certain skills. Could yeah. be a new position. Sure, right. Um, that's so that was, again, it doesn't have to be, but that was one thing I thought about. The other thing was a community, community relation thing. I think ever since I've been on the board, it's always been that. Yeah, a little bit of a disconnect between sure. the town and 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 the businesses. So yep, maybe something on that. And then the other thing I had was um, continuing. I, I think one would be good is for you to pick what you feel um, that you need to uh, take a course or train on. Yeah, um, you know that better than us. Like I I know last year, the year before, you did did something road. in regards to roadway. I did I pieces a because you said that you lacked on the I did public yeah. works piece. Of it so yep. uh, those were just kind of the tidbits that i had but i like the idea of aligning the goals from the top down so that's really interesting so if you talk about select board goals i think that's a great i've never thought about it that way chris i really like if that's the way your company works i like that that's a really good thought process i mean for us to do that so I think that's good because it could help me if the select board had goals, I set goals. And then when I do the employees, they all have to set mm -hmm. smart goals. So wouldn't it be nice if what Chris is saying is, I mean, that, uh, I like and, that and, idea and a lot. To, I don't know. We can talk about both topics at the same time, but then yeah. on the select board end of things, for the most part, I had the same thing, like for us as a select board, um, I think the employee development piece, it becomes a difficult one because we don't have employees. Yeah. Um, but the community relations piece um, would be like for each one of us to pick. I, I know we usually go to um, activities anyways, but it could be, you know, we could agree upon doing X amount a year. Like it might be um, you know, attending a community um you know, the Ford Festival it could be or, or attending something that's going on. It could be sitting in on some committees, you know, just something that we yeah. are visible. Um, you could pick, and I'd suggest this before, you could pick a committee, each one of you, so you become a liaison between that committee and the select board. <laughs> Sometimes people do that. I mean, or towns do that. So I had that one to kind of line that. And then and then I think the same thing. I think we all, like some of us been on the board longer than others. There's, there's various different um, I don't want to just say trainings, but there are various different seminars and things that we could do, um, or it could be as, you know, sitting on, uh, two rivers, you know, there's, there's those pieces that we, we could do to, um, you know, better train ourselves, develop our skills as a board. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Um, you could also have, if you had, you wanted a speaker, somebody to come in and talk about a specific topic during a select board meeting, you could do that too. Ellie has. So those were some, yes, Ellie. Uh -huh. We iterate that that's a great idea because Bill Hall attended our recreation committee and uh, Carl Russell att uh, attended our nice. recreation committee um, in the past. So, so we welcome we welcome select people to to okay. um, So I think that's a great idea. So th those are kind of the ones I was looking at, and I was trying to figure out how we. The board could align our stuff with Therese, that Therese then could align her stuff with with her employees and kind of have yeah. sim very similar style of goals, I guess. And then it allows each person to kind of choose their how they feel their smart goal fits inside that goal. But yeah, that makes sense. You know, that could be anything. I mean, that could be, you know, you know, and then it gives people, you know, if you wanna you know, same with us, if we want to. Do, do trainings and you know maybe you know gene's passionate about energy and climate maybe he attends a piece on that or um you know, you know um or you know denise is new so maybe she sits in on 
um, I, did you end up going to the select board? The region, so there's uh, there's different regional trainings with the select board. There's probably a bunch of online now. I oh, yeah, there went is. in person when I did mine, but yeah, and you got all those, yeah, those things that were sent. And then there's always the annual Killington. There's things too. Yeah, that's what there's you're always saying. the annual one that town Killington fair or yeah. So there's a when bunch of different runs that town yeah. yeah. fair in October. Yeah, and Paul said. Um, in here, he would suggest more interaction with neighboring select boards and in turn more neighboring town managers. If he's saying that in reference to me, um, I do attend quarterly by manager luncheons. They have a monthly, which I don't do. And select boards, I actually do speak to a couple select board members in neighboring towns, but um, but it also could be other select board members talking to other local select boards, neighboring select sure. boards as well. So. Um, well, I think again that could that could be yeah. something that a community relations or something that yeah. you know reaching out to neighboring select boards. I mean, it's always nice to kind of know what select yeah, boards are doing. Every once in a while, to go to a meeting or you know see their minutes and just see what's mm -hmm. what they're up to. Yeah, that's interesting. You that's know, just good... to kind of jump off of one of the things that Chris was saying was, um, I would I would maybe even broaden community relations to beyond just our immediate community, you know, I'll use Gene as an example, you went to the housing, the sort of regional housing um, conversation that's been going on and sort of using that as topics that are important and sort of impacting a lot of people in our region, not just our town, to sort of widen that scope outside of Bethel to then see what are, what are other uh -huh. towns and areas doing and then kind of be able to bring that back and report back to our board as to like, hey, I went to this you know, housing seminar entirely, yeah. and this is what they were talking about. So yeah, yeah. and that was interesting too. And the meeting was uh, uh, that Nicole's been working on mm -hmm. with IREC. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's happening in a week or so. Yeah. So it would be good to you know, that kind of inter <laughs> inter community communication and conversation. Um, Related to my hobby horse, a possible uh, smart, almost a smart goal that we might want to think about. For the select board? For, for well, the select board and probably with involvement of the town manager yep. is uh, having a clearer energy slash climate plan. That we can, you know, work, see what we can do to work toward uh, a town response to that. Okay. Town response. And especially with the changes happening in the energy. Yeah. I don't want to get off topic, but because I'm going to forget this later. So. Okay. Uh, um, on the e energy committee meeting minutes, there was, um, did you see that, Gene? They had um, at 558, we have an energy burden of 11%. Do you know what they meant by that? Yeah, because all of a sudden it just came out of like, like yeah, ener the energy burden is. So is that like the carbon footprint or? No, no. That's the, it's a, how much is a family or a household burden by energy costs? So that's cost. It's uh, primarily cost. a cost of energy, but it's okay. for a household or for so, so what their overall budget. Yeah, eleven percent. So if of you've got an income of eleven percent of their dollars, and you're spending thirty five for energy. Okay. How does it? That, I was wondering that was read to. Yeah. That, yeah. Up, so that's that's okay. what the energy burden is. So is that including like electric heat? That would be all energy. Are you vehicle? A vehicle. Okay, because that was one that was like transportation. Yeah, eleven percent. Wow. Yeah, it, it was mm -hmm. right here. I, we have an energy burden of eleven percent. Okay. And I was wondering, so, I didn't know what that meant. So that's to, it, that's a measure for the community, but it, it but that it's based on income versus of the residents versus the energy being consumed. Okay. Do you know how that relates to the broader population nationally or even statewide? Like what what would an average energy burden be? I that I don't know. But from our conversations with 
Green Mountain when they were here. Uh, one of the reasons we were chosen for that project was because we are a highly high energy energy burden community. Gotcha. Right. So oh, presumably that's high. Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to get the you know come yeah. off the tracks there, but I was. Yeah. I knew I was going to fit well, later. I was it, going it to really, the notes. It really like, hasn't me. come off the track. I mean, yeah. that's part of the. Part of, that would be part of the information that ought to go into a climate or an energy plan for the town, not just the town buildings, but for the the town as a whole. Um, Dave Eddy is asking Gene, what night is the is the Nicole the meeting with the is it the same night as the Equity Inclusion Book Club? Yes. It is okay. Yes. I don't know if it's the same time of day. I have to check that. Okay, Dave, did you get that? Thumbs up, Dave. Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Sign language. All right, perfect. So it's time. I couldn't remember with Dave with uh, David asked in the chat, and I just couldn't remember. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> so do we? So um, so back to kind of what Lindley was talking about. So. To line these, we're we're still going to go with the last meeting in June or first meeting in July that we do your yeah probably the last in I'll we'll do your I'll performance get, I'll get review, you the self and then late July we would do the 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 goals for the board and for you sure is that what we're talking about Perfect. okay so we That's have the meeting I miss every year <laughs> I will so get, we got a little bit. Yeah, we don't have to decide on these this evening. No, no, it was just a discussion for people to right. kind of see what you were each other were thinking. And I will give you my self evaluation, um, hopefully in the next packet, and then you guys will look at it. You can meet an executive session, and then sure. usually, I can't remember. I think we met an executive session after you did it. Or maybe just remember, I'm going to be not around the last meeting of June. That's right. Okay. All right. So we'll work around it. It's yeah. No big deal. Okay. Awesome. The, the I my calendar says that the IREC meeting is at two thirty to four on the thirtieth in the town hall. Thumbs up. <laughs> so, so thank you. June twelfth meeting, you'll have us. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's on. Or by June twelfth, yeah, have that, and then we can have an executive session June twelfth. Yeah, go through sure. just the board. Yep. Okay. That right. makes sense. And uh, so, but yes. I mean, you I, guys can do the goals on the 26th. I just won't be here. Yeah, so. I think, yeah, and we can push them. I think, um, yes, that makes sense because I think the employees have to have theirs and to me, their self evaluation by the May. So, this will work. Okay. Perfect. All right. Any further discussion on those two items? Do you have anything uh, further, Dave, on either one of those items? Or are you good? He's good. He's good. Okay. All right, uh, whatever we get left on the town manager's report. Um, so Chris and I met with uh, our attorney, David Rue, uh, Brian Wright, his daughter, Emily, and their attorney, Mike Tarrant. And we're just waiting for some documentation to go to our attorney. And then um, so we'll actually, we may have something to discuss at the next meeting or in the next couple of meetings. So. Um, but at this point, we don't really have anything further to report. Just yeah. And then what did we want to do as a board in regards to, because the original goal for the board was to go and look at Wright Road and yep. the Upper Gilead piece. So and uh, we, have we still want to move forward to having a board meeting in June. I think Dave was on uh, site to look at that or not. Or I'm sure for what Dave Rue said. I think he kind of said, like he, yeah, he, no, he, he did say his goal was to say was hopefully we could do an on site meeting in June yeah. with um, a final decision. You know, I think the decision maybe would be by September was what he said. But we also have other roads that we need to look at. But I think we'll just do them at a at one at a time because yeah, it's he a, thought that we just do them yeah because it's a but, process. But, but yeah. we had already planned on. Yeah. Well, we can always do Gilead Upper Gilead for sure. We don't have to do it the same night as right. Right. Um, uh, unless advised by an attorney not to, I don't know why we don't still need to at least have the information of a site visit. 
provided. We will, and it's it is statutory. It's laid out very strictly. And you have so, to go there. We have to meet. We have to adjourn. You have to be there. There's a whole process. Yeah. Abutters have to be notified, etc. So, so, so yeah, we do have to do. We certainly need to look at that upper piece of, and Gilead and whether or not we do right road at the same time or not. It's not but in order to have our site visit, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. in order to have our site visit up there, doesn't the select board have to at least um, give the option of what we're thinking about? Mm -hmm. I'll make it a friend. Yeah, if, no, you're right. If we are thinking about it as a board to declassify the road, then mm -hmm. don't we have to make that public before the... Yeah, you do. The meeting. So we can't just go up and have a meeting. Like we have to no. say, you know, we're looking, we are looking at yeah. downgrading this from a class three to a class four or yep. a trail or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll put it on the June 12th agenda. By then, maybe we have heard back. So from, June 12th agenda would be for us to, to just discuss it and formally say, discuss yeah. it. Yep. And propose what we would like to do. And yep. then we have to have another meeting. Yep. To go and look at it. Yes. Um, also, just to acknowledge a potential conflict, if Chris is away the last week in June, I'm away the last two weeks in June. Okay. Um, and so that might mean we've pushed to the early early July, or if we're able to squeeze okay. it in. Um, and we away the last two weeks. And it, the only thing I got thinking is you may have to, if I want any extra meetings, but you know that may be something. You know, if we're going to book their meeting, for an hour or whatever up on yeah. Upper Gilly, that might be its own meeting. It's true. If not, we're not going to get have any board no. activity that right? no. that time. So, That's true. No. So and we have a specialty meeting that we meet on a you know a separate Monday or or yep. another day of the week. Yep, absolutely. So we'll look at that and hopefully, like I said, hopefully by then we've heard something from our attorney. Mm -hmm. So we have um talk about that a little bit and then um, but yeah i think it makes sense because of their proximity and the same landowner abutters to do both upper gilead and right road at the same time just because the property owners are almost identical there's a you know so you can slide down denise yeah feel free move closer I can slide over this one too. there yeah, you go yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so that's yeah. it for the. Um, and then I know you have it on there, but was man. there any update on the Christian Hill traffic? Okay, so I did uh, verify the rules changing the speed limit, and um, it hasn't changed. It's the same. So if you do the speed study and it's high, we can't adjust down. Also, um, I did put in a copy of the traffic ordinance because it was different. I thought for sure it was thirty-five everywhere as. And Morgan and I were kind of thinking that until I read the traffic ordinance. Um, I did talk to Oscar about it. He said that he was doing early mornings and Justin would be doing later and that they would um, definitely do targeted patrols on Christian Hill. He also had been in touch with uh, Mr. Garrow. Uh, unfortunately, both of the constables are on vacation this week. So um, Oscar's gone for the full week and Justin's gone Wednesday to Wednesday. But they did say that they agreed to do targeted patrols up there, understood certainly the issue. Um, and then again, we were talking about before the meeting, but if I read it correctly, the first 1.1 miles from 107, which is the normal paved section, maybe yep. just slightly up from the intersection. As you're starting to go up the hill. Yep. That's 35, but then it changes to 25 for the rest of the. Yes. Yeah, so I think Dave Eddie sent me an email today, and I apologize, Dave. I didn't get a so chance to get back that, to you. The he section that we were talking about is, is 25, 25, not 35. Right. Exactly. And, and then that got me thinking do we have the correct signage up there for 25? We do. Okay. Yep. We do. And we just need to put up another right. one. So, um, I think that we did have the right signage. So, whoops. Well, you see somebody do the for 35. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you know how it is, like, with these dirt roads, like, I mean, how many times yes, do you actually trying. drive the speed limit on a dirt road? Like, I mean, I mean, you got to think of the washboards and the mud and the, the snow. I mean, how often can you actually... I mean, you look at a dirt road and you're like, okay, I'm doing 25. I mean, how many people are doing 35 or 40 of these yeah. things? And if so, how do you stay on the road? Like exactly. So, um, and so I did because I had talked to Rita, as I said, to talk to her about you know what's the like thirty five on watershed. I don't know how you even do that. Like, I know and it's crazy. You gotta be like there. a drift car or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, that. You gotta be really good. Yeah, I can't, I gotta be really good in this thing. Yeah. 
So um, anyways, and then Lindley did give us the uh, radar that she has, uh, that she had. So we're gonna charge that. And um, so anyways, I did give a copy of the ordinance to Morgan so that he could see it. And um, so, but Dave is saying the measurement of the distance, i.e. 1.1 miles does not match the description. I, yeah, I don't know, Dave. I didn't, obviously this, I didn't do this ordinance. Um, and it's funny too, Dave, because it says, um well the 1.1 miles does not go to the intersection i think is what he means right it's saying 35 mil miles an hour extending northerly 1.1 miles right. to the intersection of town well, highway saying the intersection is which point is nine. sanders oh, okay because we're paving that or you're we're right in that section now it's 0.9 miles yeah and here it's saying it's 1.1 miles so and 1. then 1, you'd be halfway up the yeah and then hill. from there it goes to 25 miles an hour so i i don't know where they got the 1.1 miles um and he's yeah dave's right it's 0.8 miles and and which right. he knows because exactly. we're paving that now so it I makes don't sense tell you. going from paved to dirt but yeah, i don't mileage is yeah there. I guess obviously this is something that we need to take a look at mm. this ordinance and um but unless probably something that has been looked at and well, let me see i can i think we gave you the signage page on there. 88 yeah effective august 13th 1988 yeah so we need and i think that so might be time maybe to go through and gene also <laughs> brought up there's a mistake there's any in revisions here. In here yeah so we can't necessarily change we can't change the miles per hour but we could certainly, we could but we, we could yeah. be accurate in it. So, well, you can't change it. We could do speed studies if we wanted to we on certain roads if we had studies. questions. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And and um, rivers will do those. And don't we get we get a couple of freebies a year, right? I think so. Yeah, she's never charged us for one yet. So yeah, but yes, but it's still that weird. Um, you know, state statute that if yeah. everybody is speeding, then it's going to tell us we can raise right. the speed limit, but we cannot lower it. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it, you know, we've been fighting this battle for a decade, and I don't know why the state hasn't changed it mm -hmm. um, to make it more logical. Does it have to go by the speed limit? Doesn't have to. No, not when he's, when he's going home, he should. You would think, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody should talk to him before he starts pulling people over. I will speak to him. Yes, because I think it's always nice to. Uh, you should set an example. Set an example. Right. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I was behind him when he was going home one day. You wouldn't believe how fast he was going. He could do citizen's arrest. Did he have his lights on? No, he's going home. Ah, all right. So. I'll make it. it's evaluation time. So this I mean, is you know, <laughs> it doesn't bother me none because. Yeah. It's just, you know, sometimes you got to give somebody a break because they're going 10 miles over the speed limit. Right. Don't yeah. mention my name. Were you, were you keeping <laughs> Joe up? Joe said. <laughs> what was Joe that? said. I said, were you keeping up with him? I said. <laughs> well, I kept up with Joe Fish. He's going to yeah. wait my yeah. yeah, good for you. Yeah. All right. No, it's actually evaluation season. So it's, it's actually a good time for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So thank you. Yeah, we had select board meeting minutes from the 15th. So Denise has a correction. I, and do you, yeah, Lindley? Because I usually write down who okay. moves to the uh, motion. And I had written down on my notes for the pool that I moved the motion. And Dave Eddy did second it. And somewhere in that conversation, Chris um put on there to make sure that it does not exceed the thirty-five thousand. yep that's right he did amend that or a suggestion okay. yeah right so i moved the motion and yep. dave eddie seconded it all right i'll fix that did you have something else uh are you asking me or denise no i'm good okay go ahead Lindley. sorry um uh what's his name jordan don't do it Garrow? jordan garrow wasn't in the list of visitors he what? Uh, oh, he what? He's not listed. Thank you. Um, and then down at the end of page two, uh, it's written as Karen Biller, but it's Karen Bixler. Oh, okay. and it's a couple. Her name's written a couple times. Is it wrong both yeah. times? Uh, yes. Oh, yep. Yeah. I see it. The people's handwriting needs to be legible. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, oh, she wasn't a visitor. Okay, that's oh, good. Thank you. I'll yeah. fix that. 
I probably read it. I mean, I knew it was Bixler. I just read it and didn't think anything about or it. Else it and, yeah. Yeah. Yes. and then under the awesome. Jordan, under Jordan's um, paragraph, there yep. has the 32 speed limit. Oh, okay. Perfect. So I'm assuming it was 35, it but was. now now we know it's 25. But <laughs> that's we're right. getting there. So perfect. All right. Thank you. Well, I don't make those changes. Let's get him without done. Paul. Yeah. I know everybody without Paul. I'll be proud today. today. Yeah, Paul. He's look proud. at him. He's, he's giving you the thumbs else. up. <laughs> All right. He's like somebody's reading him. And it will be as has corrected and authorized the town manager to make any other editorial connections yeah. <laughs> that may be necessary. Uh, yeah, I'll move to uh, to adopt them as amended. All right, thank you. Okay, and when we second it, all in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Other communications? There were. Oh, that's uh, right. There was, I gave you the information I forgot about the often asked questions about speed limits. So yeah. I did give you, give you that. And as we talked about a little bit before that the energy committee had theirs and I had that question that has been answered. Now. Thank you, Richard. Um, had a, a moment with the equity and inclusion one. There's really no information here, but the I meeting's tomorrow. <laughs> Right. Bye, fellas. <laughs> it was like, how is, how is there no information, but it's just the agenda? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I saw that as well. I didn't see anything else. So that was it. Anything else come before the board? Well, I was just to say that I did last week, from last two weeks ago, I will meet with the Energy Committee in their June meeting. Uh, Ascertain or see what they're thinking and within the future. Okay. And um, I know there may be an interest in them meeting with select board. So, okay. Maybe. Yeah, just Thanks. have them let me know when I can make it. <laughs> they, right, thanks. Like thanks, Bye, Bradley. Take care. All right. To adjourn. Oh, Second. Okay. All right. Well, good evening, everybody. Yeah.